Now, you know, I was talking about tattoos and piercings and stuff like that. It brought up this subject that's been on my mind lately, and there's just trend going on that's really bugging the shit out of me, okay? So I want to address it. Now, the subject is pornography. Now, if I were to ask this audience, hey, who's into porn? Nobody's going to admit it, which yeah. means... <laughs> Your girlfriend loves to know you jerk off when she's not around, okay? Wife, okay. right. oh, that makes it even worse for crazy, okay? But there's this trend going on at porn that's bugging the shit out of me, but in order to address this issue, I sort of have to go back and give you, like, a brief history of porn. I'm the Stephen Hawking of porn. Only 10 people per show get that joke, but it's worth it. Okay, that's all I'm saying, okay? Now, when porn first started getting popular in the early 70s, there were no recording devices, okay? So porn was an actual standalone brick and mortar movie theaters. And they looked just like regular movie theaters. They just had, you know, X rated titles in front of them. And you'd just do the same thing. You'd go to the box office, you get a ticket, you walk in there, the guy tears it in half, you walk through the lobby. Why they sold popcorn and milk duds, I have no idea. <laughs> You go through this black curtain, you smell of disinfectant hits you. Well, what you see is these old guys with raincoats over their laps, bouncing up and down. I mean, that's what I heard from people who were around in those days. Yeah, that's the rumor, you know? Now, for you millennials that, you know, anything I say you can look up, I'm telling you the truth. In, the, in those days, in the early 70s, when porn first started getting popular, um, the power in porn was with the producers and the directors. And they had this rule, okay? They would not hire a porn actress if they had a tattoo because they felt, get this, it would be too distracting <laughs> from the beautiful artwork that they were producing on the screen. <laughs> Did you ever see 70s porn? I'm serious. The whole fucking screen is hair. That's all you see is hair. It's a little white thing going in and out of hair. That's the whole fucking movie. God forbid you had a black dick, the whole screen was dark. You couldn't see it. All right, now fast forward about 10 years, mid-80s. The invention of the VCR. Now this revolutionized a lot of things, but specifically pornography, because now you didn't need the theaters. They all closed down. Everybody got their porn on the VHS tape. They watched it in the privacy of their own home. Now when this started happening, certain actresses were selling more tapes than other actresses, and you know they would get a certain piece of the percentages of all the stuff, and they started getting a little more power, and they went to the producers and directors and said, fuck you, we're getting tattoos. So they all started getting tattoos. All right. Fast forward, 34 something years later, here we are, 2019. Every porn actress that's working in the business nowadays has some sort of identifying feature on her body. Some tattoos are very cute, roses over here, dolphins are very popular. One porn actress, it's so bizarre, she's got a cobra tattooed around her neck with the fangs biting her right tip. Who am I to judge, okay? <laughs> but there's this new trend going on, this is what's pissing me off, which is tattoos that are writing words, sentences, phrases, and it totally fucks me up. Because here I am, I'm all prepared. I got a scene on pause in front of my computer, okay? I got the lights dim, very romantic, yeah. I got the lavender chamomile candle going, oh yeah, we're ready. Saran wrap taped underneath the desk, I am prepared, okay? Hey, you kids don't laugh. You never know when the feds are gonna knock your door down looking for a DNA sample, okay? I'm just saying, be prepared, okay? So I sit down there, I put the scene on, and I'm getting into it, and I'm getting into it, and I'm getting a little hot and bothered and stuff like that. The next thing I know, phew, this phrase passes me by. I'm sitting there going, shit. What'd that say? <laughs> now I gotta back the shit up. I gotta take a screen capture of it. I gotta move it to Adobe Photoshop. I gotta enlarge it six times. I gotta hit the sharpen tool. And what do I see nine out of ten times? A fucking Bible verse. What is, what is going on there, right? 
Listen, I know there's some religious people here. I'm not looking to offend anybody. My point is this, you shouldn't mix the two, okay? If you're gonna pick a job where you're on your knees sucking two cocks, don't have John 316 tattooed to this track of the That's all I'm saying, okay? Get another job or wear a sweater. That's all I'm saying, okay? Now, now this next story is a true story. And it, it involves porn, but it's not about porn. It's basically about the differences between men and women, okay? Now, I got married in March, uh, March 3rd to be exact, 1985, okay? We lived together for a year and a half before we got married. She had a small studio apartment in Manhattan. I had a big spacious apartment in Sunnyside, Queens, which I took over from my parents because most of you probably don't know this, but it's a Jewish law that no matter where a Jew is on the face of this earth, the night before his 65th birthday. He wakes up the next morning and he's in fucking Fort Lauderdale. We don't know how this happens. We just wake up and we're online at the Denny's Early Bird Special. We go, hi, I'm in, I'm in. So in 83, I took over my apartment that I grew up in. So we spent a couple of nights, her place, my place, and she knew I had a little porn collection. And periodically, during the year and a half before we got married, I would say, hey, hi. Want to watch a little porn? And her attitude was the same every time, which was, what do you need that for? Why are not enough? And as men, we have to be respectful. We have to honor the respect and the way that they look at it. Because let's be honest, we can't, you know, tell the truth, you know. You know, it's not that I don't love you, but if we're making love and my eyes are closed, I'm thinking of Rachel Welch and Margaret or Farrah Fawcett. Those are the three hot ones in 85. And I advise you to do the same. Rather than look at these fucking ears bobbing up and down, close your eyes and think of Paul Newman, okay? That's my advice to you, all right? All right, so we get married March 3rd, and I'm noticing she's not giving up that studio apartment. We're paying two rents, right? So some toward, sometime towards the end of March, we've been married like three weeks, I sit her down, I say, sweetheart, we can't afford two apartments, okay? Either you move into my place, which is big enough to accommodate both of us, or we'll start from scratch, we'll find a new place and start all over again, okay? All right, a few weeks goes by, middle of April, she sits me down, she says, I have a proposition for you. She says, on May 1st, I will give my landlord my rent and a 30-day notice. June 1st, I will move into your apartment under one condition. We have to remove every piece of furniture that you grew up with as a child. Because all the furniture was from the 50s. I said, hey, you got, a, you got a deal, okay? So the whole month of May, every day, I would throw out a chair, a lamp, a chest of drawers, one thing after another after another. June 1st, the moving truck moves up, moves all her shit in there. Okay, the story I'm about to tell you, true story, happened June 2nd, 1985, okay? So it's the next night. Uh, she let me keep the bed because it was a great bed. So you got the bed here, headboard, I'm here, she's to my left, TV, VCR, the rest of the apartment is filled with boxes, okay? About 10.30 at night, I forget what we were watching, all right? And all of a sudden she gives me a nudge and she says, hey, why don't we try a little porn? <laughs> so I go right to the shoebox, the converse. <laughs> They didn't have Adidas and Nike in those days, okay? I pick out the VHS tape, I put it in the VCR, I fast forward to the scene I want, because that scene had been successful for me on several previous occasions. When she was not present, I put it on play, I hop back into the bed, we're under the covers, the scene, and I'm telling you, I don't want to get too graphic, but she is into it, okay? Underneath the covers, she's pleasuring me slowly and watching the, the uh, t uh, slowly with her right hand, I'm pleasuring her with my left hand. The scene is progressing like five, seven minutes. She is really getting hot and into it. And I am just about to make my move and go to her neck and kiss it, which she loved, and slowly work my hand down. And she yells out, stop, stop, put it on pause. I put it on pause, I go, what, what is it? She goes. That's the couch I want for the living room. 